Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Dill, massive matchup Saturday afternoon. Louisville heading on the road to play Notre Dame. And I get that a lot of the national media attention is going to Georgia and Alabama. Like you talk about a matchup that has massive college football playoff implications. I think you're looking right at it. Like if you're Notre Dame, you need this football game. And if you're Louisville, this is a massive feather in your cap. And quite frankly, one of those games that we're going to figure out if Louisville is a legit college football playoff contender in this matchup. I think you have one of the best offensive play callers and offensive minds in Coach Brom going up against, I think, one of the best defenses that we see in the country in Notre Dame. Fired up to get into it now. Before we do, and as always, most importantly, let it fly in the comment section. Dill, I don't think we necessarily agree on how this football game is going to go, so we're certainly going to have a little bit of a debate, but would love to hear from you guys in the comment section as well. And of course, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. All the support you guys have shown the boys over the last couple of weeks been amazing. We can't thank you guys enough. And Dill, without further ado, let's start with this Louisville offense that has such a legit passing attack, top 10 in the country in terms of yards per pass. And I think a caveat in this football game, I think their best wide receiver, Colin Lacey, who they got in the transfer portal, I think he's going to be healthy for this game. First time all year going up against the Notre Dame secondary, a 42% completion percentage to opposing quarterbacks. It doesn't get much better than Notre Dame in the secondary. How do you see this matchup kind of shaping out? Yeah, my fundamental concern probably for Louisville is I think Notre Dame can make this a very one-dimensional attack for Louisville. And that's not really necessarily been a problem. It wasn't a problem against Georgia Tech. They didn't really run the ball at all. What, they run it for like two yards a carry or something like that? And obviously you're still filling the stat sheet up on the points spread, or with the points. But I don't think that necessarily plays as well with Notre Dame just because of what you said. That secondary is so, so good. I'm kind of wondering – if Louisville can get some sort of balance. And frankly, that might involve using Cullen Lacey and the way he can be used. And whether that's having their run game with that quick pass game that they can get to, especially with him coming back. But I think somehow they're going to need to figure out some way to get something easy because it does feel like at times they get a little reliant on being able to hit the ball down the field. Yeah, that that is a very fair criticism for Louisville. Like, are they too reliant on the explosive plays? And look, I ain't getting up here and saying, yeah, stop hitting explosive plays. Wow. Like that is what Coach Brom does very well. But can you hit those explosive plays against a Notre Dame secondary that is, one, so difficult to hit explosive plays on, but more importantly, just super stingy in the passing game. Dill, I think another storyline here, and part of the reason why I'm so high in Louisville, I do think they're one of the rare teams that can block up Notre Dame. Like, again, Notre Dame has a legit defensive line that, quite frankly, I don't even think has played their best football yet to start 2024 what people don't talk about, like you'll talk about the points per game for Louisville. What you don't talk about is that offensive line is filled with veteran dudes that have played a lot of football, a lot of which I think will be playing on Sundays over the next couple of years. Another fascinating matchup is can Louisville, you know, block up this Notre Dame pass rush. I think they got a decent shot at doing so. And it's not even a big, obviously Notre Dame's pass rush is really, really good, but I'm kind of with you. I mean, against the Georgia Tech team that, again, I think they have a pretty decent pass rush. They have some pros on that edge or in that edge position. I thought those tackles really acquitted themselves well, and it's kind of interesting. I think Louisville might have three tackles if you throw Rasheed Miller in there and came in and played really, really well too. So I think that is probably the one thing when you think about like, okay, this game probably will be very much put in the hands of Tyler Shuck. Obviously, if Notre Dame could sit on them with the pass rush, it's pretty much over. This game, I don't see that necessarily being a game. But again, Louisville's probably shown that they can, I think, manage and be able to protect him enough where if their wide receivers can get loose, they can make something. Yeah, and I'm interested in tackling in space for Notre Dame because what Louisville's really good at is, one, they can push the ball down the field. But I think more importantly, I mean, Coach Brown's really good at getting his playmakers out in space and letting them work after the catch. They're one of the best teams in the country in terms of yards after the catch. It's hard to separate against Notre Dame but I don't think they're as good tackling in the back end as they are in covering. So I wonder if that's a thing that Louisville can kind of work to. Um, last thing I'll say, and you kind of noted it, not a great performance on the ground for Louisville against Georgia Tech in, in their first real test of the season. Does Tyler Shuck have to get involved with his legs in this game? And again, Tyler Shuck can do it. I don't know. Louisville hasn't wanted him to do it, obviously, with the injury pass that Tyler Shuck has had. This might be one of those games that you have circled on the schedule where, hey, we're going to need every single asset that Tyler Shuck brings to the table. And part of that is his athleticism. 
I wonder if that is a part that Louisville kind of wrinkles in here against Notre Dame because you know Coach Brom has some wrinkles that he hasn't shown yet that he's fully expecting to use in this Notre Dame game. Dill, let's flip the sides here. This Notre Dame offense, elite rushing attack, right? You take a look, 6.2 yards per uh, – or 6.7 yards per carry. That's number five in the country. Uh, Jeremiah Love's averaging 7.5 yards per carry. That is an incredible number. He's one of the best running backs in the country, at least in my mind. Dill, that's how I think they're going to have to get it done. I think Louisville's secondary is pretty dang solid, and quite frankly – this Notre Dame passing attack has left a little bit to be desired. I think it's a combination of a couple different things. You still want more to see, you still want to see more from the pass catchers. Like at the end of the day, they only have one pass catcher that has gone over a hundred yards this season. But I think more importantly, the pass protection has been extremely choppy for Notre Dame. We kind of expected that heading into 2024, not only replacing the tackles, but also losing your starting left tackle in preseason. Louisville's got a good pass rush. My biggest question is, can Notre Dame control how this game is played and really get that ground attack going against Louisville? And the big thing with Notre Dame is they need to avoid the negatives because you see them be able to move guys off the line of scrimmage. That offensive line, for the most part, plays well. But when they have bad reps, there are really bad reps. I mean, even against Miami of Ohio, you saw a couple like four-yard negatives in terms of their run game. And Louisville, that's really what they want to do. And they'll give up a big play here and there, obviously. That defense is super aggressive. They're really shooting gaps, and they're flying in hard. So they'll get their negative plays, or at least they're going to try to. And that's kind of what they build their defense off. But Notre Dame, I think for them, they need to be really accountable for their gaps, be able to avoid those. And then again, I think if they can – They'll just hit their plays because you said it, Jeremiah Love, in terms of just finding holes, getting the big plays. You saw him do it against Texas a and I think he can really hurt Louisville doing that. But again, they need to stay out of bad situations because I think just like I kind of said, Louisville's probably going to be a little bit one-dimensional. I think Notre Dame, just by the nature of Riley Leonard, needs to play better football. Like I, You say what you want about the pass catchers. In my opinion, he's missing some really easy throws, and he hasn't kind of developed that – I think that connection with the tight end position, which has been really, really disappointing. I think he's got to try to find a way to get that position involved because obviously I'm pretty convinced Evan Mitchell's or Mitchell Evans is their best player. Yeah, 100%. I mean, 5.9 yards per pass attempts, 104th in the country. I think you hit the nail on the head. Like, if I were to say what's the biggest kind of the key stat that if we look up at the end of this game and said if it goes in Louisville's favor, they have a good chance of winning this football game, it is probably the negative plays created on first and second down. Like how many times is Notre Dame in those third and long positions? I'm not going to compare them to Michigan in terms of they're dead in the water when they're in third and long. That being said, it's one of those, it's an offense that right now throughout the first three games that we've looked at and said, they don't want to be in those third and long positions because when you get this Louisville team pinning the ears back and getting after the passer, they got multiple guys that can certainly do it. You're obviously young and inexperienced on the Notre Dame offensive line, and then you haven't really seen enough from Riley Leonard to have a ton of confidence that they're going to be threats on kind of moving the chains when it's third and seven plus. The other part is they need to probably get back to a little bit of that screen game that they had a lot of success with, success with I should say, against Texas A&M, that quick game they were working on. I thought they did a pretty good job on that. It's not like they were killing Texas A&M, obviously. They were mostly beaten up, up through the run. But they did do a decent job, I think, keeping a little bit of balance and kind of what yeah. we talk about with Louisville. Like they almost need to do it to try to get their run game going. I think Notre Dame tries needs to try to do it to get their passing attack, at least have some semblance of working. Because again, I just see with this Louisville team, if you don't really make good throws down the field, they're really, really hard to deal with. And Haynes King made a couple of them or was able to hurt Notre or Louisville a little bit. But just the way Riley Leonard's playing, I'm not sure you can consistently rely on him doing that right now. Well, you you said it best. Like This Louisville team is just super, super aggressive, and they will give up some big plays, but they will also create negative plays. They also create some turnovers. I think the the kind of key to this football game is what happens more. Like, Is Notre Dame able to hit the explosive plays more often than create negative plays, or is Louisville able to create the negative plays more than they're giving up explosives? So let's get into the pick here. Six and a half point dogs for Louisville on the road at Notre Dame. Where are you going with this one? Give me the Irish to cover. I think they're going to be a huge problem for this Louisville team on the defensive side of the ball. Just because, I again, I'm really concerned with the fact that they can't run the ball against the Georgia Tech team. That Again, I'm not sure. Georgia Tech's a really pretty solid squad. 
but you should be able to run the ball better than what they were able to do. I mean, two yards per carry isn't in the ballpark, which you need to do. And I just don't think if you can't be a little bit balanced, you kind of get to looking like a little bit like Texas A&M where it gets really, really hard to move the ball. And with that secondary, they just don't make those mistakes that I think some of the teams like Georgia Tech was making that gave Louisville some big plays. I, I just don't see you relying on that if you can't have a little bit of balance. On I, 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 that's, I'm going to take Louisville in the points here. I think this Louisville team is significantly underrated. And I'll get to the reasons why I'm taking Louisville, but I totally agree with you. My biggest concern for my Louisville pick here is can you rely on the explosive plays that you've relied on over the last couple of weeks against an Notre Dame secondary that just doesn't give them up? I mean, again, 4.9 yards per pass attempt, top 15 in the country, 42% completion percent is given up. Like it's, it was, something's going to have to something's going to have to change or not change, but something's going to have to break like this Louisville passing attack or this Notre Dame secondary. And right now it's hard to bet against this Notre Dame secondary. That being said, I'm going to go Louisville because I think they can block up Notre Dame better than any other offensive line we've seen so far play Notre Dame. I think Tyler Shuck brings so much more juice uh, to this Louisville offense. And I think most importantly, like coach from Colin Lacey coming back, I think they have, a ace up their sleeve in terms of wrinkles that they're going to have in this game plan. I think this is the game they've had circled for the last couple of weeks. Like they've had a bye week in between these last couple of games. I think you're going to see coach Brown come out and script a few really good drives, be able to put up some points on the board. And this Louisville defense is, it was underrated last year. I think it's underrated this year. It's a really, really solid group that has multiple NFL caliber dudes at every single level. Give me the Cardinals. You're on the Irish. Going to be a fun one. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. Again, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.